What's the most idiotic rule you've ever been expected to abide by? I'll start. No Linux in high school because it was classified as a hacking tool. In 5th grade, my friend and I were walking through the mostly empty school to get to our bus at the end of the day. A teacher was walking in the opposite direction towards us, and yelled at us to walk in a line. So we made a line, just the two of us, and walked like that to our bus. But, a line can be drawn from any two points. You had already formed a line. I once took a part-time job from a temp agency at a Toys R Us distribution warehouse where my job was to cut open boxes, place it on all on a pallet and put the pallet in the bottom of the stacks, large shelves. We were all just extra people they needed for the extra Christmas workload. Met all kinds of interesting people including an elderly husband and wife who were farmers trying to make ends meet. Well anyway, the one person in charge of us was an absolute C. She was a permanent Toys R Us employee. We were treated like crap. Oftentimes we didn't have any boxes to cut open and were made to stand still at our tables. Large, but low metal tables with 4 people to stand around and do nothing. If we moved around or heaven forbid we sat down on the table, we were screamed at. I guess they thought if we were going to be paid for doing nothing, that we should suffer for it. Standing in one spot for up to 4 hours straight would absolutely kill my back. I have run into a lot of jobs where the rules seem to be just made to punish employees. Oftentimes because of what some bad employee did in the past and now all future employees have to pay for it. I worked at a Toys R Us store for Christmas as extra help stacking the empty shelves overnight. We had a rule that if there was nothing to do you'd go to the warehouse in the back and drive around like a maniac in those little electric toy cars. I don't think this was official policy though. I am an EMS helicopter pilot. I fly with night vision goggles. Problem. The FAA rules for using NVGs state that the aircraft must also be equipped with a working radar altimeter. So if I am flying over the Sierra Nevada mountains on a pitch black night and the radar altimeter fails, I have to take the night vision goggles off. Fixed wing pilot here. Your first job is ensuring the safe arrival of your aircraft. Screw the rules if you have to. Just land safely. I went to a semi-boarding high school, about 10% of students boarded, and new dorms were constructed while I was there. We had a big meeting, and the principal said no students of the opposite sex in your dorm room we don't want anyone having sex. A bit paraphrased. One of the students stood up and said what about the gay kids they get to have sex. So for about a month, the rule was no students of the opposite or same sex in your dorm room, with the exception of your roommate. One time at my high school, some kid got busted dealing pot from a bathroom near the auditorium. As a result, students were barred from using that bathroom for the rest of the semester. I'm sure that completely solved the problem. My high school closed a bathroom because someone got caught having sex in it. It lasted about two weeks before their two men elates caused by kids having to sprint across campus just to pee. Elementary school in Canada, we were not allowed to form circles. During recess and such as you get older, you kinda get into that whole oh look at me I am getting older and cooler and I just stand around and talk with people instead of freaking around in the snow type of thing. And apparently as forming circles are a safety hazard because supervising teachers couldn't see anything going on in the middle of the circle. I mean, god forbid, what if we were making a circle inside of that circle? You guys should have made a square to frick with them. At a previous job, I was instructed not to keep any document or email for longer than 6 months, and that my computer would be audited to ensure compliance. This included program source code. I was a programmer. <laughs> Giving up my nail clippers at airport security. I fly the planes. Clearly, you're trying to take Conta. Wait what? As a lifeguard at a resort, I was not allowed to drink water in front of the guests, and ended up getting fired for it. Can't drink water in 100 plus. F. Weather. Pretty idiotic if you ask me. I am a system admin for a company that had a proposal to do some work for a large bank. They told us we needed to comply with their security procedures for data storage, and mentioned the name of the document in an email. When we asked for a copy of the document so we could make sure we were compliant, we were told that we couldn't see it as it was an internal bank document, and not allowed to be transmitted outside their network. That's also how US law works now. I worked at Pizza Hut for a while, 
We got an order for 5 pepperoni pizzas. So I laid out 5 discs of dough, stretched them all, then sourced them all. You know, the most efficient way to do it. The manager came over, and said I was doing it wrong. That I had to make each pizza start to finish, place it in the oven, then make the next one. I told him he was an idiot and kept doing it the efficient way. GM came in later and totally had my back. Christ that's a pathetic victory. I worked in daycare. We had classroom ratios. Say one teacher must be in the room for every five children there. My new boss wanted us to call her when we needed to go to the bathroom and wait for her to come and cover us for the time it took us to go pee. Okay, so this doesn't sound so bad. Except we'd call her and she'd tell us to hold it. Or she'd say that she was busy with something and would be there in a second. And then a half an hour later when we're slinking down the hall to the bathroom she'd yell at us for being in the hall. She also wrote me up for being too loud. In a daycare, I was singing songs to infants during circle time. And they were all sitting quietly and clapping. She was crazy. Didn't happen to me personally, but my sister is severely mentally and physically handicapped. Wheelchair bound and frequently has health issues or doctor's appointments, which inevitably led to many missed classes. Despite this we've gotten countless phone calls and messages on the machine informing us that my sister has earned an in-school suspension for her missed classes. Dang that's a good way to get your school sued. I wasn't allowed to watch PG-13 or higher movies, or the book, comic, game, act equivalent, until I moved out of my parents house at 19. Additionally, I was not allowed to have my computer in my room, not entirely unreasonable. The weird thing about that is it kept being true after I got married and was just visiting. See in that case what you say is okay, we're going to stay at a hotel then. Not me but I went to high school with a guy who had very overprotective, stereotypical Asian parents. He then went to college a 5 hour drive away from his folks, and lived at college, so when he was away, for all his parents knew he could have been doing drugs and going to strip clubs 5 nights a week, but when he came home for holidays, he had to be in before it got dark out, even when he was over 21, when Batman Begins came out, his parents only let him go see it with me and some friends because we lied, to him, for his own good and said my mom was driving us to the theater. We were all 21 plus. In schools, if someone tries to fight you and you don't want to, you can't even defend yourself. The rule is if you throw a punch, or perform any other violent act, you've consented to the fight. Are you a 140 pound freshman about to get killed by a senior? Did you hit them once in self defense, but got sent to the hospital? Well guess what kiddo, you've got 5 days out of school suspension. We actually have in our rule book the penalties for setting off a bomb, is that necessary? It was even worse at my high school, your butt was suspended even if you sat there and did nothing. I worked at a zoo and we weren't allowed to use the word evolution. In high school I left campus after class and got some ice cream. I came back 20 minutes later to meet with my teacher for help on calculus. When I walked into campus, I was stopped by one of the ladies on yard duty who informed me that I'm not allowed to come back on campus after leaving. I explained to her that I was coming back for tutoring but she didn't care. Long story short, she took me to the admin office and turned me in and they gave her weird looks and told her what I was doing was completely fine. Had to wear an aerial harness to climb a 6 feet ladder. When I was in primary school, about 7 or so, I remember that we were not permitted to eat mother nature lunch bars, because they promoted paganism. I ate them every day. Back in high school, our then dean of students, a woman who literally carried around a ruler to see if girls skirts were too short, tried to bring about a rule where girls had to have sleeve dresses at school dances. That rule didn't last long, as in before the next school dance, one of the female teachers, 35, told her that, after spending the weekend going to different stores, there was not a single sleeve dress that either she or a 16 year old would want to buy. Half the school would have been in detention if they hadn't taken out that rule. As a guy, I would have deeply considered purchasing and wearing a sleeveless dress to the dance, before chickening out and not going at all. 
The company I used to work at told us that our emails didn't work externally, and that we could only email each other. It was total rubbish, and everyone knew it. We could email our friends and families anytime, but we had to pretend like nobody actually knew. That's 200 people in the office hiding a secret because the IT guys weren't actually IT guys and had no idea how to set up an internal messaging system. The IT guys knew. They also thought it was a dumb rule and just let email through rather than block it and have to listen to users be. At a private school I went to, it was mandatory for all boys to wear ties on Wednesdays. If you didn't wear one you were sent to home to get one. Well, one day I forgot. Luckily, I was blessed with the ingenuity of MacGyver that day and made a tie out of a long piece of paper towel. It worked for a couple hours until some buttholes in my class pointed it out. Apparently, paper is not an acceptable material for ties. I was sent home. Once worked at a Chinese restaurant where if you forgot to put the rice on the table's order, white or brown rice which were free, the owner expected you to buy the entire table's meal out of your paycheck. It happened to me once in the 6 months I was there and they told me to pay the $50 tab for the table. I told them if they enforce that rule I'd walk out in the middle of service. They didn't enforce the rule. In my elementary school a few times a week they would take the brighter students and put them in a class 1 or 2 grade levels higher. To help teach maturity. I was finished my work. Grade 4. I was put into a grade 6 class. And didn't have anything to do. So I started doing the other class work. After I finished. I went to the teacher and asked if I had done it correctly. And proceeded to be chastised for the next 30 minutes. Apparently there's some taboo on challenging yourself. When I was in high school there was a rule that students were not allowed to grow facial hair in any form. If a student tried to grow facial hair or just plain didn't have the time to shave before getting to class, which started at 7am, he was sent to the disciplinary office, scolded by the vice principal, and forced to shave with a single bladed disposable razor and no shaving cream. Multiple of my friends faced this punishment. I asked several teachers why this rule was in effect, and most of them simply stated that they didn't know. I got one answer out of the dozen teachers I asked, and that was, it's so that the students don't look like they're older and get mistaken as faculty. This would allow them to roam the halls and not get sent back to class, to which I could only respond why don't you just learn what your co-workers look like the football coach was not happy with me after that. I was homeschooled through high school, and when I was applying to schools, I had this conversation with the local college's admissions folks. Admissions. Okay, and we'll need a copy of your high school transcript. Me. Oh, I don't have one. I was homeschooled. Admissions. Okay, we'll still need a transcript. Me. Right, but I don't actually have one. Admissions. Well, we need a transcript to let you in, so you'll have to send us one. Me, you realize that no such thing actually exists, so I'm going to have to make something up. Admissions, that's fine. So I did, and was promptly accepted. This will be a metaphor for life, take note. Not mine, but at my friend's work. Not allowed to download Firefox because it's not secure. Main browser was IE6. To show school support when the school song was played, students would link arms and sway side to side. We got a new principal who immediately banned swaying due to its suggestive nature. Any student caught swaying will be suspended. And we were. This was 1972. He was fired in 1973. In 2002, my oldest child had this weird substitute teacher in one of her high school classes. She commented about strange rules and his bad attitude. When she said his name, all I could do was laugh. It was my old principal. No holding hands or hugging rule in high school. In junior high during our school dances, whenever two people danced, their naughty parts had to be a basketball apart. Made for some real awkward looking slow dancing. We weren't allowed to talk, at lunch, in the cafeteria, grade 6-8. Year 7-11 in the academy I go to, but I'm in year 12 now so don't have to wear uniform. Have to wear thick black blazers year round and you're not allowed to take them off for any reason, except science experiments and art. In 09 there was a mini heat wave and we still weren't allowed to take off our blazers. Many detentions were given over that week for taking off the blazers so we wouldn't get too hot. 
My high school's cafeteria was too small to legally hold all of the students, fire code reasons. For this reason, I would eat lunch in the band room. My senior year, they cracked down on this. The principal called an assembly and announced that all students would be required to spend the lunch period in the cafeteria. At this point, I stood up and said do you realize that that would require exceeding the legal capacity of the cafeteria, breaking the law and putting students safety at risk the principal responded with well, sometimes you have to make do with what you have. I don't think fire marshals play that game. I install people's computers and remove old ones. Because it's a union building, I can't carry a flat panel monitor, 10 pounds, 90 feet down a hallway. We had the same sort issues when I worked at Kennedy Space Center. Couldn't move desks, computers, or any type of equipment. This is Diamond Spongebob. He only appears every 200,000 videos. Subscribe for good luck. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.